Nutrition is what fuels the human body. It makes up the physical body, is used as a source of energy for various activities, and is stored for survival. But nutrition plays one more important role. It helps the body recover. There's a development in today's medical and nursing practices that is increasing in importance. Nutritional therapy. It's an approach to help patients regain their physical strength through precise nutritional guidance. It's estimated that approximately 30% of the population of Japan will be over 65 years old by 2025. Dealing with the increased cost of medical care and health insurance has become a serious challenge for Japan. In light of these developments, a lot of hope is being placed on nutritional therapy. The underlying idea is that proper application of nutritional therapy can help treat inpatients effectively and prevent prolonged hospitalization. Although still part of the field that has relied heavily on medicines, nutritional therapy fully utilizes humans' natural abilities. We'll take a look at the great benefits of nutritional therapy, a whole new type of treatment on the medical scene. In daily life, we use the word nutrition without giving much thought to what it really means. Nutrition refers to the process whereby organisms take in substances from their surroundings and utilize them to support life. The vital components in this process are called nutrients, and the essential ones among them are often referred to as the three major nutrients. The three major nutrients are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. Proteins provide the body's building blocks, while carbohydrates and fat provide an important source of energy for the brain and the body. In addition, there are so-called micronutrients, which include vitamins and minerals. Together with the three major nutrients, they belong to the group of five major nutrients. Vitamins help the body absorb the three major nutrients, and minerals help the absorbed nutrients to be utilized. Most of the nutrients that humans need are included in food. Eating, in other words, is the process of taking nutrients into the body. During the nutrient's long journey in the body, they go through dramatic phases of digestion, absorption, metabolism, and storage. These phases serve as the key to understanding nutritional therapy. This man is just about to have lunch. The well-balanced lunchbox in front of him contains various nutrients. Let's look at the nutrient's dramatic journey inside the body. When solid food first enters the body through the oral cavity, it breaks down into smaller pieces, becomes mixed with saliva, and turns into a perfectly soft material. The throat displays impressive movements here to swallow the food. Right next to the esophagus, there is the windpipe, also known as the trachea. Before the food enters, the trachea is covered with a lid called the epiglottis. This movement is called swallowing and sends the food off to the esophagus.
Once it reaches the esophagus, the food is pushed forward in the body by a process of muscle contractions and relaxation called peristalsis. Eventually, the material reaches the stomach where digestion begins. It's the gastric fluid secreted from the stomach that plays an important role in digestion. Gastric fluid contains strong acid and digestive enzymes. The gastric fluid further softens the food matter and the stomach starts to show a dynamic peristaltic wave-like movement to make the food descend. The small intestine receives the softened and digested material. This is where absorption starts. The duodenum, which is located at the entrance of the small intestine, is connected to the pancreas. The pancreas functions as the main factory for digestive enzymes. Here, the food matter becomes further mixed with various digestive enzymes. Food moves through the active small intestine, where strong peristaltic movements take place. What appears to be smoke is actually the nutrients digested from food. The inner walls of the small intestine are lined with numerous finger-like small projections called a villus. All nutrients eventually get absorbed through these minute structures. A single molecule of each nutrient is absorbed into the bloodstream through microvilli, which cover the surface of each small villus. Protein and carbohydrates are broken down into small molecules by their respective digestive enzymes. Meanwhile, fat cannot be transported in the blood because it's poorly soluble in water. This is why fat is turned into a water-soluble form called chylomicrons. These enter the lymphatic vessels after they're absorbed through microvilli. Then they enter the blood through the thymus, which acts as a bridge between the lymphatic vessels and blood vessels. The absorbed nutrients next arrive at the liver. This is where metabolism takes place. Protein is converted to amino acids. Carbohydrates that have been broken down to sugar are metabolized into glucose. And fats that have turned into chylomicrons are converted to triglycerides and cholesterol. Then they get used to build the body or as a source of energy, or become stored in the liver. After nutrients are absorbed, the food matter is excreted from the body in the form of feces developed in the large intestine. Strong waves of peristalsis also occur in the large intestine. Absorption of nutrients is performed smoothly by the orchestrated movements of these digestive organs. Good diet, good bowel movements. This man seems to be in good health. However, not everyone is fortunate enough to obtain the full benefits of nutrients from food. These people include patients in hospital. In the past, quite a few patients at a hospital had suffered malnutrition because they were physically weak or because the same diet and nutritional support was provided to everyone regardless of health conditions. Arising from the need to improve such situations, Nutritional therapy has been adopted by many hospitals and nursing facilities in the last few years.
Nutritional therapy refers to applying a system of appropriate nutritional control that's optimal for each patient's condition and medical treatment. The objective is to help patients regain their functional abilities. So how is nutritional therapy put into action in a medical setting? Let's take a look.